receivable. But instead of just making sales by cash, they oftentimes offer customer a way to extend the payment date by accounts receivable, but there's a cost to doing business by this method. And the cost would be that it's risky in a sense, some customer may not be able to pay the money at all later on. Okay, so the cost here is that some companies don't pay, results in uncollectible account expense, or we call this doubtful accounts expense, or bad debt expense. So all these terms are interchangeable terms that relates to uncollectible terms. So the benefit here for making sales on account is that you have a wider customer group. You can make sales to customer even though they don't have cash on hand right now. The cost is that you may likely be having a delayed payment. Okay? Or may not even be collecting a part of the payments that customer um, has actually incurred in sales. So there are two methods to account for these cases. For all the public traded companies, we'll be using this first one. This is our main focus for this chapter as well. Allowance, allowance method. This is the most popular one. For mid-sized small firms, if they're not publicly traded, they don't have uh, stocks traded in the market, sometimes they would use direct write-off method. Okay, but the first one here is encouraged and is also regulated for all public traded companies. Allowance method, meaning we do an estimation up front. Direct write-off, they wait until they know the exact customer who didn't pay the money, <coughs> then they write off the accounts. Okay, but the first one here, allowance, we basically estimate a pool of potential on collectibles. Allowance method, it's used for public traded companies, but today we'll also be going over a little bit of direct write-off, how it actually works. It's easier in a sense, but it's not in line with the matching principles, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. 